ina mana, ina reo, ina iwi, e rau rangatira mā, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Greetings one and all. We acknowledge the land and the sea and the sky of this place, the mighty rivers that flow through this region from the mountains and into the sea. We acknowledge our ancestors and the work they have done to bring us here together today. Hello, I'm Paul Gilbert, the CEO of Community Housing Aotearoa, and it is a great pleasure on behalf of the Char Council, many of whom are here, our team, all of whom are here, and all of the members of our Charitable Incorporated Society to welcome you to our 2023 conference. There's even people in the upper aisles, it's crazy. I acknowledge you and the purpose and intent of this gathering. We give thanks to Maka Tau of Tēnai Tu A Huriri Runanga for that blessing that has been given to these proceedings and to our being here. I pay my respects to all of you and express my hope that many new relationships will be formed as a result of this conference. We are here because each of us cares. We care enough to tackle a series of deep social issues that have affected generations of New Zealanders for decades. We care about fixing inequity. We care about helping others feel safe. We care about human dignity. And most important of all, we care because as human beings, we need to. But the recent events at the Loafers Lodge in Wellington got me wondering if we care enough. Of course, none of us here were directly responsible in any way for the tragedy that took place. But the brutal truth remains, it happened on our watch. Our care failed. We didn't care enough. And while we revert back to reports and inquiries and tweaks in policy and funding here and there, everyone in this conference knows deep down, if we're honest, that similar, a similar tragedy could easily happen again. From our outstanding emergency services and support staff to local Wellington community housing providers and their teams and the residents and the survivors, we can only pass on our deepest condolences and offer support to those who have been impacted as we all come to terms with this tragedy. We can only imagine what you're going through right now. The fact that it was on our own doorstep just a few kilometres from Parliament is all the more tragic. I'd like to take a moment to read a letter addressed to us from the Wellington City Mission in Murray. He and his team were supposed to be here with, here with us at this conference. Uh, he wrote to me last night and wanted me to pass on this message. I wish you all well as you embark on an exciting three days of conference together. Apologies from me and the team at Wellington City Mission for not attending as planned this week. The tragedy at Loafers Lodge a week ago and the consequential challenges and trauma mean that time away from Wellington is not tenable at the moment. As you start your proceedings today, I would ask that you pause for a moment and reflect on the enormity of last week's tragedy and what it means in the lives of those who are among the most vulnerable amongst us. We're yet to see the full effects of this disaster and won't know the total cost in terms of loss of life and the ongoing effects of loss and trauma on survivors for a very long time. We must not see these lives damaged and lost in vain. Apart from the demonstrated compassion and generosity of the community over the past few days, the only real positive from this darkness will hopefully be the commitment of all of us to do better, to ensure this never happens again. In the words of American theologian Jim Wallace, sometimes it takes a natural disaster to reveal a social disaster. The fact that we all allowed the most challenged and vulnerable of our citizens to live in such unacceptable housing conditions is an indictment on us all. I note the conference of the theme, making a shift from crisis to transformational change. Perhaps there's never been a more pertinent aspiration in response to what has happened. So Murray says, his sincere hope is that the legacy of Loafers Lodge becomes a stimulus for change, a motivator for us all beyond any we have seen before. He says, as we are gathered here today, many of the brightest and best of Aotearoa's housing strategists, dreamers, thinkers and doers, 
He, he trusts that the next few days will ensure that we develop a way forward that reimagines what is possible, challenges our politicians and decision makers, and ensures that everyone has the opportunity to live in safety and well-being. I wish you and the other conference attendees, he says, every encouragement and success over the next three days as we collectively experience the wisdom of those assembled and make a very real difference in the future of house, housing in New Zealand. Na ma na kitanga. Blessings, Murray Edridge. No aspect or facet of our villages, towns or cities should be unwelcoming to their people and no room in a house should feel neglected. Our spaces and places should feel right. And that feeling is directly linked to the congruence between our physical, social and spiritual spaces. It's hard to step back into this space after focusing on the pain and loss that's been happening up in Wellington, but we must. At dinner last night, talking to Carl, who's addressing us on day three, he relayed from the UK that really no substantial change has resulted in Britain after the Grenfell Tower fires. I hope we can do better. I've been in this role for just a few short months and feel deeply that community housing is in my blood. I feel you are my tribe, my whanau. Like so many of you, I'm all in. Joe, my wife and I, and our dog Gus have moved from our home and community in Waitakere Forest up north to live in Wellington to do this work. It's been a very big change of culture and we're settling in, but there is a lot to learn. People in Wellington talk an awful lot about politics. <laughs> Speaking of Wellington, my ancestors, William and Jemima Gilbert, arrived there at Petoni Beach with their five sons, all woodworkers and builders uh, in 1840 from Kingsbridge in Devon, England. They arrived full of hope for a better life for them and their offspring. They were escaping the ravages of Europe, where in the 1840s saw widespread social unrest, numerous revolutions, some of them successful, some not, all seeking social reform. And remember, the 1840s saw a million die in the uh, horrors of food shortages driven by the potato famine in Ireland. Since then, my whānau have spread from Kawakawa to Whanganui, from Otrahonga to Napier. My spiritual home is Tairua on the east coast of the North Island, where my parents, Bruce and Pat, still live. I was born and raised in Lower Hutt and Auckland, which has mostly been my home apart from 15 years overseas, mostly in continental Europe. I came to this role from a number of years with the New Zealand Housing Foundation, which is one of the community housing providers that specialises in home ownership and uh, products and services. Most recently, I worked at Community Finance and Positive Capital as part of a team delivering innovative financial solutions for the community housing sector, which has struggled with a lack of equity to be able to do the amount of new housing supply it needs and wants to do. During the conference, you'll hear from a range of solutions providers about outstanding innovation that occurs when we bring values aligned allies together, gathered around a shared interest in homing all our people. I use this word homing in reference to Dr. Moana Jackson, who deepened and broadened our understanding of the distinctive meanings of houselessness and homelessness when he addressed this forum in its last in-person meeting in 2019. We acknowledge our sister organisation, Te Matapihi, who are here with us. They are the Māori voice for housing and we pledge ongoing support to the outstanding work they do to support Fano, Hapu, Iwi and Tikanga Māori community housing groups across Aotearoa. For those of you who have not read them yet, please note that the Waitangi Tribunal has recently published a range of reports related to the Y2750 inquiry. They are hard hitting, uh, they are well worth reading and there are other significant documents, one of which is coming out next week also from the Productivity Commission that relates to the experience you have day to day as you face into your communities and especially the government. Charles Watergrave, who authored one of those Waitangi Tribunal research reports on home ownership, will be addressing this conference as the last speaker tomorrow. I strongly recommend you attend that session. Many of you may be aware of the 3,000 additional IRRS funded homes announced in the budget last week. 
and the $730 million investment into Māori housing outcomes that was appropriated in the previous budget. It's with great pleasure that I say to you that most of that money is already out the door, deployed into real housing outcomes. It's a win. Let's bank it as an investment in all our futures and keep going. These are the first few steps of a long journey. Our community sector's outstanding delivery against the public housing plan have in a way established a new baseline. Over the last 40 years of neglect, it's important that we work together to hold that line. No official, no politician should be in any doubt about that baseline that has been established. Many of you here know that the same fiscal envelope used as an investment, as capex, into long-term, secure and stable tenures will deliver better outcomes than paying out opex on ineffective and unstable rental subsidies. The momentum is growing, and each home delivered in each community is a win. Every new papakainga home is a victory and a life-changing outcome for the household who will stay there. We must learn together to celebrate when any of our organisations in any context delivers an improved outcome for the households they work with. Investment in Māori housing in particular outcomes is a win for us all. When Māori thrive, we all thrive. We saw this acknowledged during COVID and with the recent catastrophic weather events, floods and Cyclone Gabriel. On day three, with uh, a number of the speakers, we will dive deeper into this space, uh, particularly Rod Carr, who chairs the, Finance, uh, the Climate Change Commission. This is your conference. Own it. Make it yours. The stakes are high. They may, we hope, never be higher. The need is great. The path is long. But we're here together to gather our strength to celebrate and share our successes, to remember those who have gone before us, and to recommit to building a better future for all our people, especially those who are yet to come. Community Housing Aotearoa and all its members are four purpose organisations where for housing we want to see all New Zealanders well housed. So if you're here for those things, then great, you're in the right place. Uh, I just want to run a little exercise here, and um, bear with me. Uh, we've, I hope you've downloaded everybody the, the conference app. Uh, if you would please turn up the audience lights. We're just going to do our first survey, and this first survey is a number of how many years you've all spent working in spaces, places, jobs, or voluntary roles that are relevant to the work we do as community housing providers. Can you please maintain silence throughout this exercise? There's no speaking required. Craig here is a documentary filmmaker, by the way. If you see him filming things, which I'm going to... Can you do a shot of the total audience, please, while we do this so we can count the numbers? Um, Craig's, Craig and his son are filmmakers. They're doing a documentary, so if you see them pointing a camera at you, that's what they're doing. And I'd like to also introduce Jackie Chan, who's our ninja illustrator over there. Uh, she's a visual artist. If there are things you want her to emphasise in her uh, recording of what we're doing, haere mai, talk to her. She's awesome. So I'm going to ask you to think of a number, please. This is your personal number. How many years of service have you spent in a, a, a space that's directly related to the work that you do in the community housing space? So when you've got your number in your mind, please raise your hand. Okay, I think everybody's got a number. That's great. Okay, no talking, please. Can you stand up? Here too. Up, everyone. Now, as I call your number, I'm going to ask you to sit down. So could anyone who's got a number one or less than one please sit down? Okay. Two. Three. Four, five. OK, those of you who are still standing, have a little bit of a look around. This is the future of our community housing sector. These are people who are starting out, who are getting things going, who are learning, absorbing. Make a point to find one of the people that you can see who's sitting down and introduce yourself during the conference. Share what you're up to. 
this is what the future of our sector looks like and our future workforce. Can, I'm going to keep going now. Can uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. I'd like you who are sitting down to have a little bit of a look around. These are some of our komatua, our most experienced people. <laughs> These are leaders, people who are holding knowledge. Uh, make sure you find as many of these people as you can throughout the conference to get to know them, talk with them, look after them, because they, 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 you know, they, they hold so much of, of the knowledge that we have within us. Now, we've got to, we've got to get to a winner here. So what, what, num what number did I get up to? 20, okay, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. How are we doing? 30, 31, 32. Goodness me, 33. We've got a Charles and a K. Are there, oh, no, there's some people up the back there. 34, 35, 35, there we go, 35. That's, wow, fantastic. <laughs> Just so you know, we're going to add that up and we'll come back to you with a total in terms of how many hundreds or thousands of years there are in this room, but I'm making a point, right? So look, it gives me enormous pleasure and relief, I have to say, to hand over to Jade, our conference MC. Jade is a uh, descendant of Napuhi, Nati Fakaue, and Te Whakatoa here. She's an architect, an urban designer, a researcher, a housing advocate. Her interests include decolonisation, the re-establishment of papakainga, indigenising urban spaces through kaupapa Māori design, and mobilising effective responses to housing and homelessness. Jade has been associated with community housing Aotearoa since its very beginning. Uh, and I'm so pleased that she agreed, agreed to take on this role. I sat with her a few months ago at the Māori Housing Hui in Rotorua and uh, asked if she would consider taking up the role, and thank goodness she said yes. Jade, uh, I pass it over to you.